Hey, this is Alex. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to share with you my 10 tips and tricks in doing Kofax RPA. I made this recording a few months back using RPA version 11, but generally it should apply to all the older versions as well. So let's get started and drop down in the comments below if you have any questions. Now I'm going to share with you guys some of the tips and tricks that I've prepared um, to help you in doing web and desktop automation. So hopefully some of this will be helpful to you. The first one will be looking at the configuration for the low page step. So if I click configure step over here, there's an option to click configure. You can see that there is a bunch of settings that you can actually change. And one of them is actually changing how the low page step emulate from. You can see that from here, there's an option to choose iPhone and the screen size, you can actually choose an iPhone screen size also. All right, so if I click this, it will actually load this page on a mobile iPhone instead of the normal desktop way. So what you see here is the desktop way of uh, loading the page. Uh, the interface is a little bit different as you can see later when the mobile site finished loading. Uh, so you can see now the mobile uh, page for this same website has been loaded. You can see that the layout is very different and sometimes it's actually much easier to do automation on like the mobile view because information are actually um, packed nicely together instead of sometimes for a web page, normal desktop web page design, the information can be here and there and it's not that easy to do the automation. So sometimes it also improves the performance when you do the load page on using the iPhone emulator. All right, so this is the first tip. The next one is actually talking about the preference to actually choose which browser you want to do your web automation. So you can see that there are different, there are actually different ways to do that. The, of course, the most preferred way is to go with this uh, default browser over here. So let's say if the default browser here has some difficulty, especially for those web pages that has a lot of iframes, um, the web browser will not be able to load those kind of web pages or if those web pages that is very dynamic, uh, has a lot of changes, a lot of uh, flash, this kind of stuff, um, it will also have some difficulty. So what we will do is we are going to use the uh, Chromium browser. So how you actually do that is going to desktop automation. Okay, I'll choose the one that I just created just now. Step into this. Okay, so over here you want to use the browse tab. Choose Chromium. Choose the URL. So if I choose the same one. Okay, I execute this step. And you can see the page will be loaded over here. Okay, so this Chromium browser will be much better in handling dynamic, dynamic contents. And let's say if uh, it's a web page that you still unable to identify the elements. So the next possible way of doing is changing the tree mode to ISA, it stands for Intelligent Screen Automation. So you click on resume, you will be able to uh, sort of do an OCR of the entire web page and try to capture the different elements for you. Okay. Okay, so if ISA also kind of failed, then um, the last way is to try to go with image kind of uh, uh, automation. So for example, if you want to select this area, you want to you want to be able to identify this element. Okay, so you want to select this whole area and just do a left click. You can see that the component is actually looking for the entire area that you actually selected just now. So this is like an image based kind of automation. Um, of course, th there will be some uh, limitation and problems to this. So this is like the sort of last resort if you cannot get the default browser, if you cannot get the Chromium browser and you cannot get ISA working, then you can try this as the uh, last way to do it using image base. Okay, next tip that I'm going to share is the Excel step within the desktop automation interface. Previously, this is within the open step, but right now they um, break out all the things and you have this Excel step over here. But previously, this can be done already, but somehow a lot of people just didn't make use of this. 
they uh, most of them most of people will just make use of the embedded uh, excel capability at the default browser over here so over here at the desktop automation you can actually choose to open up the uh, excel also okay i show you guys what will happen if i just like uh, excel file over here that i have put inside c drive okay step over this okay so the main difference is you have actually slightly more functions as compared to the one over at the default browser you can see that there are actually different capabilities like on saving uh, creating new sheet changing the font font colors uh, actually selecting which cell um, actually inputting some formula also so this is actually very nice um, but a little bit underutilized I feel so um, a lot of times when you want to deal with automation and Excel there's no need to always go back to the default browser Excel to do it you can actually do it over here at the desktop automation interface too tip number four that I'm going to share is on the tagging feature it is very useful especially if your environment is very huge with a number of robots um, when you have number of robots the best way to actually look for them is through tagging alright so if I select the web robot over here and click on this blue icon configure robot you bring up this screen and you can see that there is a section here for robot tags just click on the plus sign over here to give some tagging to this robot um, so it's kind of like a, it's like met meta tagging if you want to call it that way so if I just click OK um, I just want to save it and I just publish this to management console okay over here at my management console if I do a refresh you can see that there's a testing with a text over here so the good thing about this is the search over here at the tag is kind of real time you don't need to kind of do any click any button to do the search it will just reflect immediately what are the different tags that falls into this okay so if I just choose A alright you can see that the other text has SAP and both will appear together so just select the text that you want and straight away you can get the result very nice cool feature tip number five is making use of REST API to call robots to perform one after the other um, if you look at management console um, at repository and looking at the list of robots that I have if you scroll right to the right side you can see that there is a column for API a column for REST a column for SOAP so let's say if you click on REST over here you'll be able to see the actually the uh, link to access this robot all right in this URL so once you execute this URL basically it will execute what the robot is doing inside you can actually test the service over here also so back at the design studio what you want to do is you are going to insert a new action step look for the call web services call rest web service configure the step and you can actually put in the URL over here so uh, depending on whether the uh, robot receive any parameters and return any value you just need to put in the necessary uh, uh, variables over here so what a very good use about this is some of the times you want to execute a certain robot to be performed right after the other for example robot 1 finish you want to trigger robot 2 exact, uh, immediately so what you can do is having this call reps web services right put in the URL for robot 2 and straight away um, for this robot 1 at the last step it will straight away call and perform robot 2 as a, uh, straight away afterwards so this is a very good way to actually uh, execute robot if they have any kind of dependency from one another now let's talk about robot scheduling so if I want to schedule robot, I can click on the schedules here to add one. Um, let's say my requirement is to run this robot only during office hours, Monday to Friday, starting from 9 a.m. and end it at 5 p.m. and probably at a 15 minutes kind of frequency. Um, the default way of doing scheduling, you can see there's a, you won't be able to do this kind of customization. Um, so of course you can do it on the design studio um, using a date variable, for example and look for the current date and time and try to do some conditions to check to see um, whether it fulfills that kind of conditions that I mentioned just now 
but the best way to do it is still at the management console but instead of choosing simple over here you click on cron and you will see that you have a new text field with pattern over here and there are like six elements that you can put over here you can click on the question mark to find out more about what is this cron scheduling about so basically the six uh, elements is looking at the first one is looking at seconds minutes hours date of month month and day of week and there are a number of different um, operators to kind of define the conditions that you want so back to my example just now so say if i want to run it on every 15 minutes so the second element i will do a 15 i will do a 0 slash 15 and the hours i will choose to start from 9 a.m and end it at 7 uh, 5 p.m okay this one i will choose question mark this one star the last one i will choose monday to friday so with this all right it will fulfill the condition of only running robots during office hours 9 to 5 every 15 minutes next let's talk a little bit about how you can do troubleshooting and error handling for desktop automation so let me go back to design studio uh, stepping in into a desktop automation step so let's say if you want to kind of troubleshoot at which point the robot starts to fail all right so you can use the notif uh, notify stats you select others notify step basically this what this do is uh, it will actually do a windows pop-up windows notification um, stating the uh, giving it a message and icon to kind of identify which point what happens so let's say if i choose error and type a random message a customized message over here i step over this step you can see a windows notification pop up so this is a good way to do some troubleshooting next is on the use of guarded choice step okay let me close this off first remove the da device and step back into da and let me just open up a web page um it can be a web page or it can be any desktop automation steps let me execute this the web page load so let's say if i want to select some elements or make some selections or do some key, uh, enter text so what you want to do is uh, of course you will just select click over here before the click actually happens you want to add a guarded choice step okay and the selection that you want to do is choosing location file so you can see that this matches with the location file over at the left click step you can just copy and paste the component over this will do a gutter choice first before it reaches this left click step and you want to do both location file and location not file and use back the same element okay and this way you can kind of set what happens if the location found what you want to do and let's say if the location if it's not found then what will the system do instead the second last tip that i want to share is on a loop that is very underutilized so if i right click and pull up the sub menu whenever i interact with certain elements i look at under loops you'll be able to find only like uh, four loops over here but if i manually create a step an action step and look at under loops you'll be able to see there's a repeat next loop over here so what this repeat loop is basically like your while loop in java it's very good whenever you don't know how many times the loop will actually happen so the example here is looking at the search engine result and there is a lot of next pages that you can go to um, but basically you don't know how many times how many pages there will be so if I want to click next, it will just click next every time and the repeat loop needs to work hand in hand together with the next step. So this is the next step that I'm talking about. So whenever it reaches this step, it will go back to the repeat and it will just click doing whatever the steps in between. So how do you break loop is basically at this step before it reaches the next step. You go to the error handling and choose break loop so whenever the web page is unable to find this next button the loop will break one last final tip is the use of database to kind of like temporarily store some data that you want inside the design studio so the good thing about 
Covax RPA solution is um, we really have a very convenient way of inserting data or records into the database. Um, so let's say I have an example over here that has a list of multiple uh, drone information that I want to store inside the database. Okay, so um, I have a bunch of extract methods over here. And lastly, I have a step called store in database. So what this happens is whenever data that you store inside your type, okay, if I pull up the type file, okay, all this information, um, all this information populated in the type, you can just simply use the store in database step and just put in the variable type over here and it will just insert all the records inside your database. Very easy, very straightforward. And it's a very convenient way of storing lots of data. And whenever it's stored inside the database already, then afterwards you can easily uh, pull out this data to do any further manipulation that you want. So you can see over 100 over records straight away, easily done in a few seconds, stored in the database.